Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Defiant Knitter podcast. My name is Shelby and I am your host. This is a knitting, spinning, crafty podcast um, and I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas uh, where I live. I am also a indie dyer. I dye yarns for my company Bayou City Yarn Co. Um, yeah, that's I think all of the relevant information. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as at yes that Shelby, and you can also find my yarns on Ravelry and Instagram as Bayou City Yarn Co. Um, thank you to all returning viewers for continuing to come back and watch my sort of unfiltered nonsense from week to week, and thank you for all new viewers for coming to check me out and. I hope you enjoy the podcast. I have several things for you today. Um, September 30th was the last day of quarter three for our eight and 18 knit along. So I'm going to draw some prizes for that. And I wanna talk about the three hats knit along, which is still currently going on, but we don't have a lot of time left. And I have some prizes gathered for that as well. I have several whips to show you. Uh, I have some spinning several spinning things to show you. And then I kind of want to talk about what my plan is for the rest of the year. We have under three months left of 2018 and I want to make them count and I want to feel good and good and satisfied with my knitting and content with where I'm at with all of my whips and things like that and not feel stressed or overwhelmed by them. Uh, especially going into a new year, you want to be able to have kind of a fresh reset start and that doesn't mean you have to finish all of your projects by the end of the year, and that doesn't mean you have to frog anything you don't finish, but I kind of want to talk about just kind of what my plan is to give myself a, um, a comfortable fresh start at the, uh, at the beginning of 2019. So I'll talk about that at the end. Prizes for the knit along, the 8 and 18 socks knit along. So if you are a new viewer, let me quickly recap what the 8 and 18 socks knit along is. For the year 2018, the one we are currently in, we are doing a quarterly um, full year knit along where each quarter you knit two pairs of socks for a total of eight pairs over the year. You can use any yarn you want, you just um, have to enter two pairs at a time per quarter. You can get as many entries as you want in a quarter, but two pairs counts as one entry. Uh, we do a pattern prize for each podcast episode that I remember, and a physical prize for uh, one person during the quarter. Now, I did the pattern prize first here, and that was uh, number five, and the physical prize was number six. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my phone here to uh, that thread so that we can see who those winners are. I know that there was probably only one additional uh, entry since the last time I pulled a pattern prize. So um, those of you who were early on to enter had more chances of winning that um, per podcast so uh, let's see number five is knit takes two and that is Michelle and actually um, knit takes two Michelle you do a lot of commenting on the YouTube um, videos and, and, and you're active in the forum and I really appreciate that you have no idea how much that means to me to be able to have a conversation with everybody who is watching the podcast so if you're so inclined um, you should feel free to talk to me. <laughs> Go ahead and comment in the comments below or, or come to the Ravelry group. I try to have a, a thread up for every episode, but sometimes I forget and just, you know, I think there's a main chatter thread and you could just come and join in there. If you're for sure, 100% sure that there is not an uh, episode thread and you want to talk about something that's really specific to an episode, just start a thread and title it with the episode and then I'll deal with it from there to make sure that there are other details added later, but, um, but yeah, or comment down below on YouTube, however you want. Uh, so, um, Michelle did a pair of socks in July and a pair of socks in September, and those are these ones. The September socks are a really pretty stripy watermelon, and then the top 
is just a really nice kind of patina speckle blue and coppery look it looks like that is from mrs Tro mrs crosby uh the train case um in the neal colorway and i um i love mrs crosby um her satchel base you guys have seen me show things on that before um and then the second one was uh number six which is the turned brain and that is heather and heather submitted a pair of um gills socks in the mermaid lagoon colorway from bayou city yarn co and i know the second colorway is ponyo from our their their monkey socks um from our mermaids club that i did and so uh, michelle you won a pattern prize so any pattern that is available on ravelry it doesn't have to be one of my patterns but it can be um, for the cost of seven usd or less uh, just let me know which pattern it is that you want and um I'll go ahead and gift it to you. Uh, and then Heather, uh, you also know how to get in touch with me. Um, the pat or the yarn prize for this month uh, is this skein of Desert Vista Dye Works Viso base. That is a 7525 four ply nylon, four ply nylon, 7525 merino nylon four ply in the mint cocoa quilt colorway. This is a self striping. It's um, Got this nice light kind of pastel mint green, uh, a nice light tan, a chocolatey brown, and then a red. And it's just a really lovely kind of Christmassy colorway. Is it not gonna focus? I wonder why. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, this is a really pretty colorway, and that is self striping. And so that is your prize, Heather. I will go ahead and get that sent out to you if you currently have an open order on my site, because I, I know that you're a pretty frequent customer. If you do have an open order on my site, I'll send it with that. If you don't right now, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll send it anyways. I, you know, you don't have to order something just to get your prize, I promise. <laughs> and then I wanted to show what the next prize would be for next month. A little fuzz on that. Uh, the next, um, the final prize for the knit along the final quarter, the October through December quarter, which I have not opened up the thread yet, but I will do very, very soon. Um, if you happen to finish your two pairs of socks for the October through December quarter before I have a, an FO thread open, just go over to the chatter thread and tell me to open it. Because <laughs> I will try to do it before you notice, but sometimes I get um, behind on things. So the fourth quarter prize will be uh, this skein of yarn and as always if we get more than 50 entries um, I will get another um, a second prize but so far we've been kind of a low-key knit along and so there is that I also know that we're coming up to the end of this knit along and I have um, promised that there will be larger prize packs that I'll draw at the end of the year from participants who finished each quarter um, so if you have been participating every quarter, um, you will be in the running to get a larger prize pack, which I haven't assembled yet. <laughs> and as soon as I have those assembled, I will go ahead and show them on the podcast. I know that there are some dyers that I'm planning to shop from, from or at um, the East Texas Fiber Festival. So there are some things coming for those. Anyway, this is for the fourth quarter, uh, quarterly prize drawing and this is from Lorna Laces. This is the Shepherd Sock Base, which is an 80-20 merino nylon. And I think this is also a four ply. It might be three ply. Uh, and this is the Hawaii colorway. So it's very pretty. There's 430 yards per 100 grams. Yeah, so that is an upcoming prize thing. And I think that ah, okay. I was going to say, I think my mannequin might be too close to this drawer, but I'm putting stuff in this drawer as I, because those are upcoming prices. Anyway, and yeah, let's move along. That's the 8 and 18 knit along. Continue knitting your socks and putting them in the, the thread and we will, yeah. Uh, the Three Hats Knit Along is currently ongoing. Uh, that is a knit along that I announced several podcast episodes ago. Several, I think it was 
early September, I think, or late August. Yeah, so there are three hats pattern, hat patterns that we are knitting for this knit along. You can knit one, two, or all three. They are the Starfighter Slouch Hat by Tracy Cox, which calls for DK weight yarn. The Hermione Hearts Ron Hat by Christy Aylesworth that calls for sport weight yarn. And the Classic Cable Knit Hat by Haley Scarpino, which calls for a worsted weight yarn. The prizes are as follows for, or the entries are as follows. If you knit just one of those hats, um, you have one entry. So for each hat that you knit, um, one of each pattern, please post that in the FO thread. If you knit all three hats, please take um, either a photo of all three of them together or make a little photo collage of all three of them together and make another post, so a fourth post essentially. And then if you knit at least one of those hats out of Bayou City Yarn Co. yarn, post that one again so you can have up to five entries to win prizes. So far, I have three prizes that will be for that knit along, and I might gather more depending on how many people enter. Um, if I have less <laughs> enter entries, then... Oh, my cat's snowing at something. If I have <laughs> less entries than the number of prizes I have, which I don't think is probably going to be the case. I feel like I've seen quite a few people have some whips on that. Um, then I will combine prizes or I will just draw with two of the, the more high, higher value prizes. Um, so that ends October 25th actually and I actually don't... Do I have another episode between now and then? Why is she meowing? I'll go check on her in a minute if she continues meowing. Okay so it'll be right after the next episode. So the next episode that goes up should go up around the 24th. Um, I might try and um, do it even earlier, maybe the Tuesday of that week, the 23rd, <coughs> excuse me, just to make sure that people have enough advanced warning that they need to hurry up and get them done. Oh, I guess I sucked in a little extra air. <laughs> anyway, so let me go ahead and show you the prizes that I have for that so far. So uh, the first prize is actually a notebook. Uh, I have two of these. I got them as prizes myself and um, that I had received for buying a lot of yarn essentially. The Eat, ooh, the Eat Sleep Knit Yarnathon, um, where you participate and you do knit alongs and um, yarn challenges and just things like that. Um, I'm a big yarnathony yarnathoner. Anyway. And I actually won two of these. And I really love them, but I don't need two of them. And so this is a really nice um, notebook. It's got like quite a few pages. They are lined pages. It also has a attached uh, pouch to put um, pencils or notions or whatever you want in. And you know, you can have that at the front or at the back, however you like. Anyway, so this is just a really nice notebook. I have one of them and I like jotting, well, here's the thing. I have lots of different notebooks and I jot down design ideas in like two of my notebooks and dye recipes in like two of my notebooks and uh, just various other things in several notebooks. And I would probably do the same with my other one like this, but I actually used it as my, like my gardening notebook. So you can use it for whatever you want, but that's that. And I'm actually gonna put it back in the little um, zip top bag that it came in and leave it in there and send it like that for the winner. So that's a really cool prize. And yes, I realize it's kind of like re-gifting, but um, I have one and I want somebody else to be able to enjoy it who maybe doesn't have the opportunity to get one. There is a really, really nice notebook and so perfect for all of your knitting notes or garden notes. And the second prize is actually one that I pulled out of my prize drawer uh, that I don't remember if I bought it or if it was donated. I do know that I bought several things from her and I do know that she donated like one or two or three things um, to the podcast. And this was quite a while ago. Um, but I, So I don't remember whether this one was bought or donated, but this is from Fate's Thread and it is a little set of tea themed 
stitch markers. You have a little teapot here, a couple of tea bags, and little teacups. And so that will go to one of the winners. And then I just realized I meant to be tucking these into this drawer for safekeeping. And then the third prize is a yarn prize. This is a skein of um, Hiraeth hand-dyed yarns uh, on the Elizabeth base, which is a DK, it doesn't say that on here for some reason, but it is a DK weight. Uh, it is 100% superwash merino, 231 yards to 100 grams, and uh, in the Hemingway colorway which is this really nice brown and blue with a pop of pink. So that is the yarn prize for the three hats knit along. If suddenly we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of extra entries, I will probably try and find another um, something in either my stash or my prize drawer is getting really low. So I'm going to have to um, probably just raid my stash or buy some things soon. But my price drawer is getting kind of low. Where did I put my notebook? Okay, my notebook, my podcast, or my, yeah, my podcast notebook. So that's kind of it for um, knit alongs. I will have another knit along starting between, um, before the end of the year, after the three hats knit along is finished. And then I'm kind of brainstorming various ideas for knit-alongs for 2019. I kind of don't, I don't want to plan too much in advance because I had planned kind of in advance for 2018 and then I, and then I ended up going through some personal things that made it difficult for me to podcast regularly and so while I do want to make plans, I want to plan to make plans. That's, I mean, I don't want to avoid making plans just out of the fear of feeling, um, too depressed to podcast but also I want to kind of keep it real and not give myself so much pressure that it ends up causing me to get in a spiraling round of depression and you know so uh let's go ahead and talk about whips uh on top I actually have one that's not in a project bag because this was kind of been sitting on my desk in my yarn it yarn bowl holder thing um and I've been trying to work on this pretty steadily. I do not have a pattern printout on this one because I've just been using, oh, I do. Okay. I guess I just left it at my computer. Um, but this is the Starfighter slouch hat. This is one of the hats for the uh, knit along, the three hats cow. And um, this is knit out of um, Yarn Love uh, in the Amy March DK base out of the Arabian Nights colorway. It's just a really beautiful tonal deep eggplant purple. And this is the Starfighter Slouch hat by Amy Cox, or Tracy Cox, my goodness, not Amy. Um, I'm gonna scooch forward a little bit. Um, I will say that this particular hat is taking a little bit longer than I thought because the stitch pattern is not difficult. Please don't think it's difficult, but it is kind of time consuming. So if you're planning on knitting all three hats for this knit along, I want to suggest casting on this one now so that you don't run out of time. I feel like this is, I think the cable, um, the ca classic cable hat will probably go faster than this. Um, cause honestly the cables on the bottom of this didn't take hardly any time at all. They're very simple cables. And again, this stitch pattern up here is simple, but it's kind of time consuming. It's a kind of star mesh detail that's probably not going to focus. Anyway, it's really, really lovely. I have probably only, I have to do probably twice as many repeats of this section as what I've already done. So I've got a ways to go. Um, I am knitting these on the called for needle sizes because I felt like it was going to give me a decent gauge and I haven't actually measured gauge so um, I just based on I've knit enough hats out of DK weight yarn those of you who, who've been watching for a long time you know that I've knit so many hats out of DK weight yarn that looking at the pattern and looking at the called for um, 
needle sizes and things like that made me confident that I could use those and get a good size hat. I don't know yet if this is a keep hat or a gift hat or a donate hat, but I really love it and just I might end up keeping it. We'll see. I'm kind of due for a new hat. My last hat that I made myself, it's been a little over a year and I really love my current favorite hat, but um, yeah, maybe I'm due for a new favorite hat. Who knows? Anyway, that is what that one is. And I, I meant to say I am knitting them on Xiaogu interchangeable needles. I use the short tip interchangeable needle tips, um, which are four inches long, uh, because they connect with the, um, the cable that makes a 16 inch circular. And I use these tips for my longer cables too. Um, but I just, I like the shorter tips and if I had to have one set of them, I, I chose the shorter one. And so, but really love this. I love how it's knitting up. It's really beautiful and squishy and, and scrumptious and soft. It's so soft to work with. Um, but it's, uh, it's again, just a little time consuming. I've been able to get a lot of it done just kind of sitting and watching podcasts or watching television or, um, stuff like that. This is my, um, and this has been my, my watching stuff, uh, project for the last several days. And so it's, it's gotten some good progress, um, just out of that. Uh, the next thing I picked this up probably only like three or four days ago. And I just, I put a bunch of repeats in it. Um, you guys, if you recognize, uh, the bag, this is from Fate's Thread. It is my steampunk octopuses bag. And uh, this is one of my Gills socks. So you might remember that I finished the first Gills sock. Uh, and this is my new pattern that's out now. I have knit um, two of these now. I knit this initial sock and then I knit um, a, a nicer sample out of yarn that would show it better. <laughs> for publishing it purposes and I haven't knit these the pair for that nicer sample out of a fact it might still yeah it's still in here there eh, it's kind of blowing out the camera but that's the stitch pattern I haven't cast on the second one of those yet I really need to but I've decided that I'm gonna kind of let myself finish this first uh, the second one of this pair um, so the last time you guys saw this it was down here with this clip for it, this little sorcerer's stone, philosopher's stone um, charm is. So I was way down there, and now I'm way, way up here. This charm just marks the fifth of the ten repeats, and uh, and then this one just marks the last stitch of the previous repeat of whatever I've worked on. And I think, yeah, I just finished a repeat, and I believe I only have two. How many times can I say repeat in a single minute? <laughs> I've, uh, I've got two repeats of this stitch pattern left and then I will start um, the second um, section of ribbing. And yeah, I'm really loving it. I honestly, it's one of those patterns for me that um, it's not one that I, I want to pick up and just do one row or two rows. I can. It's not that hard. You can easily tell where you are in the pattern. And after doing maybe two repeats, you can memorize the order of the rows. So you can quickly go through it. At least that's been my experience. Um, and so it's, it's relatively easy to pick up and put down and, you know, easily figure out where you're at. Uh, but... It's one of those ones where once you start working on it, you kind of want to like, oh, I, I want to do the whole repeat and then I want to do the whole next repeat. Kind of like how self-striping socks works where you want to get to the next, you want to get to the next color. Um, but for me, because it's just a six row repeat and it's relatively easy and kind of mindless to work it, um, it's just been like that for me. So it, it took me a while to pick it back up, especially since I knit a whole other one of the, the socks um, <laughs> in the meantime. But, um, 
but yeah, I've got quite a bit done. And then once I, I get to, once I get past the heel, then it is truly mindless knitting because this, the, the foot section is all in stockinette. And I, I did that because I really wanted, when I was designing it, I really wanted to have a, a sock design that was primarily uh, really just focused on the leg and it's hard to show you on this because it's got this wild I think my tension changed a little bit funny in this section when I was knitting this first sock and it really made the leg kind of funky the leg on this one is totally way more normal in fact it's it's more like how the foot is on this other one We'll see, maybe my tension will go crazy and I'll have a funky looking foot on the second one. Um, but I think either my tension changed or there's something with the yarn saturation being different in a different part of the skein. I don't know. But either way, it's been a really enjoyable knit. I've gotten quite a bit done on it. For my personal um, preferred gauge for socks, I use a 1.5 uh, US 2.5 millimeter. I think it's 2.5. Yeah, 2.5 millimeter. And my preferred method, as I've talked about before, is a um, magic loop method with a, I prefer a 32 inch cable. I believe that this is a 40 inch cable because I used to, I, I tried several times to do four, not four, two at a time, not four at a time, two at a time socks. And so the 40 inch cable was better for that. But um, I've kind of just, tr gone into just doing one at a time because I I tend to prefer the being able to see more progress faster um, and that's just how my brain works but yeah the color that I'm using for this is um, oh, goodness beam me up uh, and this is magnolia sock which is an MCN merino cashmere nylon from Western Sky Knits and this was a space themed exclusive colorway to Eat Sleep Knit from 2006 and uh, I had purchased this from a D stash so I don't actually even have like um, a label to show you or anything. Not that I showed you a label for the other one so. <laughs> um, okay I have one more whip to show you but before I do If your names are Ruth and Erin, <laughs> it's time for you to probably pause and Ruth, I'm kicking you out of the room for like a few minutes um, because this next whip is actually something that is for you and Erin knows about it and she will kick you out of the room and she'll probably pause it if you don't. <laughs> um, but yes, you're not allowed to watch or hear this. So if your name is not Ruth and Aaron <laughs> and or Aaron, um, just don't worry about it. <laughs> and then, yeah, Aaron, you can let your mom come back in when she, when this is over and you'll obviously be watching. So you'll know when that is. I don't have to put a timestamp because this is only for her. <laughs> so this next project has been kind of a secret project. Um, but Erin has been getting secret updates and she told me that I should share it on the podcast and that she promised she would kick her mom out of the room when they watch <laughs> so that I can show this to you all um, because I've been working on this and I'm pretty proud of it and I'm really enjoying it and I actually, I actually haven't worked on it for the last like five days but for the week before that I put a lot of time into that and then I've actually been working on it for a couple months now so let me go ahead and show you. Okay, so this project is living in a bag that Ruth actually made for me for my birthday. Um, I will talk, I think I've talked about the bag before, so I probably won't do too much, but it's a really fantastic bag. It's got kind of um, a split pocket in the middle and you can put yarn on both sides and it's got little yarn guides as well here that have snaps on them so that you can take the yarn in and out of them. I am making this project out of my yarn, and this is actually not connected, so I can just show it to you. Uh, this is the 99 Love Balloon colorway, and this is on my Pure Single base. And then the other colorway, ooh, 
it's not in here. Oh, I took it out because I finished this part of the um, project. I finished using the contrast color. I think I'm not maybe connected at all. Oh, I am connected. Okay. Um, this is a uh, Zweig sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And um, it's a little bit scrunched on the needles right now because I am at the point where um, I've only probably got another inch to go before I split for the sleeves. But I have finished all of the color work and the lace. Um, so all that's left now is the main body and sleeves. Um, the contrast color is the Elephant, which is also by U City Yarn Co. and the Pure Single Base. Um, so, <laughs> uh, this is my first time doing color work in a sweater. This is my first time doing a fingering weight sweater. Uh, if you don't include a ner uh, ner 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 newborn vertebrae cardigan that I knit for Nadia before she was born, um, which doesn't really count because it takes less than a full skein of yarn. Um, but this is where I'm at. Um, I'm really happy with how the variegated colorway kind of played with the, the tonal, the semi-solid. Um, let me see if I can not lose. I think I have needle point protector things. Yeah, I do. Um, only to make sure my stitches don't slide off while I kind of show you this. Um, I'm really, I'm just, I'm really happy with, um, with everything about this so far. It's just been an absolute pleasure to work on and I'm just kind of amazed about it. Um, I knew it was going to be a really fun thing to have but oh come on focus please. Yeah I'm really enjoying it. I can show you my floats. They're even. They might be a, a tiny bit tight but I don't think so. Um, yeah I, I stopped after I finished all of the contrast color. Um, and I'm ready to start the section where you, you, you do so many inches before it's long enough to split for the sleeves. I really love how the lace looks in this color. Like, also that lace, the first few rows of it kind of took me a little while, but after after that, it kind of just flew. Yeah, look at that. It's just so pretty. I love it so much. You guys have no idea how much I love this and how proud I am of it. The, the camera kind of washes out the colorway a little bit, but this colorway is a really faint tannish yellow, um, and it's got specks of red and specks of... specks of a kind of um dark blue I really love this colorway too <laughs> but yeah I I just I really adore this project so far I'm really loving it I was alternating skeins of the red up here but I kind of wasn't happy with the way the stitches looked where I was switching skeins which is why I haven't started doing the main part again because I'm going to start alternating skeins again and I need to sit down with maybe like a YouTube video or something that will show me maybe a better way to be alternating my skeins properly. I wanted to be alternating them every round but that kind of created a weird gapping issue so maybe I'll just switch to um, alternating every two rounds because that might make it easier. I'm not really sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really love it. That is a um, gift in it, like I mentioned, for um, a very, very good friend. And um, there's lots of reasons behind why I'm knitting it for her that I'll get into maybe more um, right, right when I'm ready to gift it to her. But um, yeah, I did um, put it on, I put, I attached extra cables to the 
this, the cable that's attached to the needles because they are interchangeable. I did attach um, some other cable lengths to it just to kind of be able to see how big it is and try it on. Ruth's a little bit smaller than me but not by a lot so I knew that um, if I tried it on and kind of kind of got an idea of the general fit and um, how like the, uh, the color work stretched out and how the lace stretched out it would give me a, a good idea of of how well it's fitting and, and how well it'll work. Um, I do have to make some modifications which is why I have some extra stitch, stitch markers placed around here um, because I, I went down a size so that there wouldn't be as much positive ease which I knew that she would prefer um, but also uh, I need to make sure that it will fit in the sleeves and um, so going down a size makes the sleeves maybe be not quite big enough um, and I, I'd rather there be a little bit more room in the sleeves so I'm doing just kind of a slight kind of raglan increases I counted out the number of stitches that would be taken off when I split for the sleeves and I just put stitch markers on and then every like three or four rounds or so until I get to where I need to split for sleeves I'm doing an increase just on the inside of the stitch marker just to um, just add some some I want to say length but like circumference to where that is and those um, increases are only just like on this part of the sweater because we've already like again we've I've already finished most of the yoke so they're just like right here and so they kind of I don't think will be noticeable so even if even if they aren't the prettiest looking like increases if they if they do seem sort of noticeable I don't think that in the finished and I don't think that when it's being worn you'd be able to see it so my chair kind of freaked out there okay I'm going to shove this back in here and Erin you can go fetch your mom again <laughs> and tell her to come back um, because that is put away now okay I do not have any FOs, <laughs> so that's um, that's what it is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop us over to the Shelby and Nick of last night. We recorded a little segment for Nick to talk about some of his cross stitch projects again last night, and I'll go ahead and insert that here before I talk about spinning. Okay. <laughs> what? I didn't know you hit it. Yeah. Okay, so Nick is back to give us some more cross-stitching eye candy and things. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to let him lead this and I'm going to knit because... Cool. Yep. <laughs> I like to multitask too. Um, when I last has, was on this thing, I talked about my current project, which I'll wait for the end, I guess, and only my first project, which was an octopus. And I said we'd do more later. So the first one I'll talk about is my second project. The first project I did was the octopus. It took like a week. The second project I did was like five or six colors. Five colors. And it was bigger. And it took me like a whole month. And we talked about like the kits that we had bought. And this is that kit. That yeah, it was the done. kit that told me, it gave me all the supplies for it and everything. And it is a sloth. And it says free hugs. It's very, very cute, and it took forever for me. But this is, again, my second project, so I had to struggle when doing this getting floss on needles. And what's the name of the thing to get? Just the uh, needle threader, is that ne what you're Needle about? threaders, getting those and breaking those at a quick rate and then running out of them and not being able to cross-stitch at that same time, finding time to do this during the day. It was during the summer, and I had I was able to find a lot of time for it actually. Um, I remember starting definitely right there with that little cute nose face area. Yeah. Wondering how I was going to do those white dots. Oh my goodness, one color dot. Uh, this is when everything was hard for me. I thought the, the sloth brown took forever. I think I ended up making a mistake and one of the arms was slightly too long and I had to fix that one as well. Uh, just like one row. It was a simple mistake but it, it freaked me out. The hearts were pretty fun. 
the 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 words free hugs seem to take forever I actually ended up doing the white part first and then the blue part because I thought that'd be more f I thought the blue would be more difficult just because of the sheer the size of it and it did feel like it took forever another cool thing about this project is the back is actually relatively neat uh, in terms of any of my projects uh, you can clearly see the rows uh, nice stopping points and all that it doesn't look chaotic I didn't overlap a lot of things except for a little bit down there in the blue and white but as one of my neater projects this one is just hanging up in our entryway uh, where our shoes go and just a just a house cross stitch my, my second project right here mm -hmm. and again it took it felt like it took a long long time and it did the hoop came with the project also I think yeah. right that's the they, one that came they with gave it. me a hoop the cloth the colors in pre in pre-cut sizes and I still have all them labeled it's different than my other ones because they're not bobbined still I just realized looking at the back of this that like there's a little stain like staining here that's it might just be the shadows in here though it might not be anything I could be making it up could be a potential staining because I did eat while doing this one a few times <laughs> uh, finding good times but overall it's very cute it's it felt like a bold project for my second go around I finished it before my summer program ended so the people who knew I started it in summer got to see it done and it was really cool and it was a it was a good big project for me to jump into bigger projects from yeah but overall I really enjoy this one I could do this one again probably at my current rate in like a week <laughs> yeah it took you what, like three weeks to do it or three more? or four yeah. like a whole month you'd probably do that a lot faster now you'd be less I think that your speed has come from being uh, more confident confident and not necessarily actual like hand movement speed but just you're more confident in your you know where everything goes and so this one also doesn't have a lot of like other projects like there's not a shading issue it's just there's just one brown it's not oh the lights from the northeast so this is a darker brown and this is a lighter brown it's just a nice brown it makes things simple which is awesome in the reverse thing of the no 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 uh, so in the camera on for us it looks kind of reversed it mm -hmm. won't like on the final editing software and stuff like that but for us it looks kind of reversed and the word hugs looks sort of like the word but <laughs> yeah the g u h yeah, the, is like a the g t sort of looks like a, just like in the viewfinder here yeah. but <laughs> it does look like some sort of s but yeah it won't Earth. yeah <laughs> It won't show that to them just because they'll see the like the actual version of it. It's just funny to me right now. So my third project, which was very, very tiny and only took like three days, I don't have with me. That's at school. Know. It's a tiny one at school. Oh, that was your... That'll be on the next one. Yeah, you'll... Yeah. Um, if I have prior notice enough to get it from school before I do one of these. <laughs> but then I started a big project, which I'm not showing... And in the big project, which took me like five or six months, I had two main breaks to do wedding gifts for friends. Little projects, yeah. So the big project will show once I get it framed. Technically, one of the projects for a break was also a big project. Um, I'd have to just show a picture of it from the internet because it's in the person's house now. But Oh yeah, we sent that off and yeah. they really liked it. It was a really nice... Now the one I didn't send off because it was smaller and because we were poorer, and I was told to do the summer, but then I forgot. And we need to have it framed, and we gotta get it framing framed. is expensive, it takes time and stuff like that if you get it framed. So we'll call this like my sixth project or so. Yeah. Was this wedding announcement? Um, obviously, you don't have to know who Justin and Ashley are or when they were married, but it is <laughs> Legend of Zelda themed. Um, it is very tiny, but the flowers and hearts and actual characters are very detailed in terms of the coloring. So it was pretty difficult because I'm like, oh, this color only has four colors in the crown area, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. So it had a lot of smaller colors going on with it. The grass was relatively fun. The heart was the first thing I did. I think that's showing the heart. Yeah, yeah, it's focusing and showing, right? Yeah, the heart was the first thing. It has like three shades of red going on there. And I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. And I was able to post a picture and people knew, oh, this is going to be some Zelda project. Yeah. Um, also notable is that Zelda is not white. 
to accurately represent the couple. Um, I don't know how much Ashley... I know she likes some video games. She definitely tolerated enough to know who Zelda is. <laughs> so she would have appreciated this as well. Justin would have loved it. Um, the sad news about not sending it yet is they're actually getting divorced. I found out last week. So now I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm going to ask Justin eventually if he wants it still. Um, this seems like the kind of thing someone wouldn't want yeah. after a divorce, given what it is. But it is really cool still, and I'm now able to show it in public. Uh, looking really close at the grass area, there is technically a white flower, but it's hard to tell. This yeah. is something that would have been good to have back stitching for or something. Yeah. Just to kind of highlight it. If I were to zoom into one of these bushes, I'll we'll wait for it, it to focus. Bit. Struggling just because it's waving around a little bit, but. Either way, they're identical on both sides the bushes and the flower bush, but they're very detailed as well. So it's a really cool small one. It was a nice break from the bigger project you'll see the next time that also will be framed at some point in the future. Yeah, we do need to get that framed. So we can hang it up in the house. Maybe we'll um, just avoid having you be on the podcast for another, you'll skip another episode like you did last time. Yeah. And then by that time, that gives us almost a month and we can <laughs> maybe get it framed by then. If this focuses, the back of yeah, Link and Zelda well. are really chaotic there. Yeah. Because um, again, couple... I wasn't as good with the smaller squares close together and only a couple of colors going on. But everything else is nice. The lettering, the bushes are relatively okay. I don't remember how long this one took me. Probably only like two weeks because I was motivated to get it done so I can get back to the other project. <laughs> um, and I was like, uh, and the wedding had already passed. Like the date was yeah, so June you were stitching this last fall, fall of 2017. Yeah, it was already uh, late for the first anniversary, so I was like, oh, maybe I'll get it for the second. And it was done by the second, and I didn't send it. Yeah, we just didn't and get again, a chance to send it out. And... Now it's done before there's a third anniversary. Yeah, Will it ever um... exist? <laughs> um, regardless. I'll it's a really nice piece. It's just kind of disappointing that like we're kind of not sure what to do with it now. Hang it up in our house, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like it's... Do I just... Like, ah, oh, here's Link in Black Zelda, you know? <laughs> right. Just fold up. You can't even fold off the, the date on the bottom without folding over a bush. Yeah, you'd have to rip out the stitches, and then it'd be just kind of the challenge of trying to deal with, like, that area might be faded out a little bit or something. Yeah. So. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> to my big project, which is bigger, I can tell you the last time I was on it, I was, I was on an outline of Ursula's face. And you could tell it was an Ursula outline. Yeah. Since then, I finished that page, did three other pages, and I'm now on the fourth page since then. So it's really been, that was like half, and then three, and then another half. So it's like been four pages since then, which is a lot of pages on its 30-ish pages project. Um, and let's see, let me do a big view first. All right, so you don't we'll zoom time. in. Eventually, but if you look at Ursula on the bottom left, that's the right corner, right? So you had done, you were working on this page. Yeah. This Ursula chunk. wasn't blue and white. It was just an outline of her head. And there's some stuff around it. And so this wasn't here, this page here. Yeah. And then the two with Dumbo and, and then underneath this, Dumbo. So everything from here over was not done either. Yeah. And obviously the stuff under Ursula is currently what I'm working on. So if I were to fold this up. He's kind of zigzagging around on the edges for a purpose that he'll tell you in a minute. Yeah, here, make it closer. From Ursula, I was able to get to these guys, which are little heartless creatures. Two of them. Um, and this is a third heartless on the bottom of this page. This page is the last one I actually just completed. It has pants of Riku. It has some cloak of Maleficent going on. And mostly nothing. Actually, this very, very bottom thing is another character that's really impossible to guess at this point. Some people have tried, and I just said, yeah, it's close. Because, I mean, it's not far away, their guesses. They didn't say, like, uh, Mario or anything ridiculous, you know. <laughs> so they at least said Disney animals. Technically, all the guesses so are close. They're close, <laughs> but they're not at all accurate, and it's going to be a while. This part underneath Ursula, 
this page is basically just going to be her large, large arms and her black dress and some scenery. This is actually all done yesterday and some of today, this little bit. Or this, it seems, it's actually a lot of bit of that page. So I did a lot of work the last two days. Yeah, you have. This is not the bottom of the picture still. There's actually going to be another half page underneath it, and that will be the bottom. Uh, before I had been doing, like, oops. First I did, like, you know, a top corner, and then I did two by two, and then three by three, and I figured I'd do all of the four by four. So filling in that, mm, this section before moving on. But I, I was tired of people guessing that I was almost done and not realizing that, you know, there's, there's, there's like half this picture still left to go, actually. You're, you're um, a little, uh, a uh little you're, under you're half. nearing the halfway point, but not quite yeah. to it. So I wanted to do the page under here and then the next half page, get those two complete. So then I'll have a scale of how tall it's going to be. How tall the photo is. So af the, yeah. And after those two pages, I'll go back over here and we'll zoom in a second to do the page to the right here and then the little half page again so that they can see oh yeah as we fold out this thing far away there's a there's a lot of white space i know it's like a two and a half inch border around here but uh it's a lot of white space still yeah it is now if i zoom into this area let me just stand up it's easier for me do you want me to hold it while you no this is good now okay so over here the last things i added the top page was dumbo and parts of zero which people were pretty easily guessable uh dumbo was really really easy once i did the outline of it uh, and zero took a while because it's mostly white underneath that page was a very very complicated page that took me a while because we have jack skellington jasmine who looks amazing i really like the way jasmine came out yeah, she did. Um, that I mean, that character, the coloring and everything looks really good. It's not jumbled or, or kind of the issues we talked about last time. Yeah, I have a little bit of a Bambi head, which, I think was decently guessable, and then Belle actually took people a while because I mostly focus on her, her the white face area before I did any of her hair. The hair was the last part of this page. And then it looked ridiculous. It looked really, really creepy without the hair. It looked like some weird ghost. Oh, the guesses were really fun. Though. They were all over the place. People were thinking it was Rapunzel, like uh, from Tangled. Um, what else were people guessing? Just any woman character that wasn't Belle. It was just really funny. People, um, someone guessed Kyrie. And yeah. But Kyrie's already in the picture in the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the red hair over there on the bottom. And then, oh, there's more of Alice's head, another corner. Her head has now been in the corner of four pages, and I've done three of them. But I won't be able to finish it until I do this page and the little half page. And then maybe I'll come to this page next. We'll see. Who knows? But she'll take forever to finish compared to other characters just for how long. Um, might as well just do another zoom in around so you can see some of the things. Standing up was a good idea. Yeah, it was. But uh, I did so much of this page also the two days before the last two days, like on Friday and Saturday. It was mostly background, and I did all the hard parts around the heartless. There's just so many random white, gray, brown colors around them that it felt like nothing was getting done all week, even though it was just a small amount at a time. But then when I got to do this big background area, it was great. I don't think the Ursula arm body will take too long, because it's... Here's like four or five black colors, and then like five to six green blue colors is most of it and some grays, and big sections. I'm in the middle of actually working on this arm, so this will be further done tonight after this podcast. And I'll probably get at least another hour of stitching in. Mm -hmm. Like in that big arm section that is right here, there's only like three or four blues, and they're mostly in big sections with like two of those four blues being a couple pieces here and there. So we'll get a lot of it done, over half of it done, roughly. I do have a small, small little bit right there. This like three or four pieces down. I decided, I was like, oh, should I do the next half page at the same time? And the last time I did two pages at the same time, it took forever. It felt like it wasn't getting enough done. It felt like it took too long. So I was like, no, let me complete this whole page and then go down and just do the other little half so I can have a border. Tomorrow I should be able to get a decent amount done too. The rest of the week, eh. We'll see, but probably not. 
next weekend will have to be another gung-ho week. It'd be nice if by next Sunday I do finish this page and the one under, but we'll see about that. But overall... Yeah. Um, for anybody who wants to see more details about previous section, and we've talked about stuff we talked about last time, that was episode 23, I think. So, you were, you missed the, might have been 24. I don't know. <laughs> now I feel like I was, I felt like 23 was right, but now I'm second guessing myself. And you can see my daily progress pictures on the internet. Um, this on, is, yeah. oh man, this is day 94 or 95 right now. I don't recall. I always remember at the end of the day when I post a picture on Instagram and my updates. But I'm almost to day 100. Mm -hmm. um, the next time you see this progress, it'll be after day 100. My goal is to finish everything by like day 209. And during that time, I do have a Thanksgiving break. And I will have a winter break, depending on jobs. <laughs> I'll probably have a winter break still. Um, which will be, like the winter break will be like over mode, go crazy for two and a half, whatever all amount of time, weeks. Because January won't have as many breaks. They'll have a Martin Luther King Day and some weekends, but I need it by the end of January, so, you know. I want it by the end of January. <laughs> Other than that, if you have questions in the future, ask them. Shelby might make me answer them eventually. Yeah, if you have questions or any comments specifically about this, you can put them in the comments below on YouTube or wherever. Um, if you want... Pants. I just really like the recoup pants, those blue things. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, also, and then Nick is on Instagram um, at Nico, uh, N I C K O, Stitch. Um, and you can find him on there. All the information will be in the down bar thing. Ne next time on, on here, you'll get to see an update. Yeah. A small math project. And the big project that was a Shelby. The one that we are alluding to mysteriously. Uh, some of you who have kind of been following stuff for us for a while and might be paying attention to other things you'll know what it is already so it's not like a top secret thing it's been shared on the internet yeah and in fact it might even be on your instagram i think you posted some pictures of it but yeah anyway it's a bigger project it's bigger than the other two smaller ones he showed you and yeah smaller than the current one he's working my with. first big project yeah arguably third if we count that first wedding gift that was a big project, right? It was a big project, and I feel like it should be counted as a bigger project, mm -hmm. but it didn't take you as much time it took because, me like... uh, in terms of days, because you were he was stitching on it while we were, um, I don't want to say evacuated, but we were not, we were staying at a friend's house during Hurricane Harvey last year, and so essentially just kind of hold up in the house doing pretty much nothing. I mean, the kids parenting. were watching themselves. Yeah, there's plenty of kids so they could just watch themselves. And so, um, and adults and lots of adults and just kind of stitched. stitching a lot. And yeah, I mean, I, I did, it wasn't the whole time on that project. It was like after two or three days when I finished to another point of the first project. And yeah. I was like, cool, let me start this other one. And I got like really far you so far that I rushed thing, to do it. Yeah, while we were there. That one I was able to get to the couple like a week. You, I mean, I think we got the week after their... You started it before their wedding. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, it was framed before their wedding. And, it was fr and so we sent it... Like, like a, a week later. Like, yeah, they had just got... I think they... Just got married and then we sent it. So they got it like a few days after their marriage. So it was really close. It was yeah, a good wedding I think present. they... they it was, we sent it during the time that they were maybe... Honeymooning. Honeymooning or yeah. something like that. And so they got it really quickly afterwards and... Mm -hmm. I think they really liked it. So. Ideally, it's in their house hung up because I think they said that. That's the that's the hope. It's framed, so it didn't. It's not like they had to try and frame it or anything to find a way to hang it. So yeah. <laughs> shipping that was tricky because I was really really anxious about the glass breaking and things like that. But they mm -hmm. got it in good shape and stuff. So we'll try and um, get a photo of it so that print we can... out a picture, I guess. Yeah. Instead of showing you on my phone. <laughs> well, I can, I'm, next time when we talk about it, if we get a chance to, I'll just insert a picture into the gotcha. video somehow. It's, my editing software is not that great, but it'll, it'll yeah. do that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all Nick has for us. 
Yeah. This is Nick. Did I not? I don't think I introduced you. You know, I think you said now Nick will talk. Oh, okay. Something like that. <laughs> That's me. So, okay, cool. All right, so uh, let's talk about spinning. Um, I had a project that was on my bobbin, I think, last time I showed you. And um, I, think I, ha I think I had shown it to you. Maybe I hadn't because it was maybe too much like in progress. I don't know. I think I had showed it to you. But I have finished that one now. This is um, a two-ply, about like a DK worsted-ish weight. It's pretty thick and thin. It's got some some larger slubby bits to it and it's not perfectly evenly plied but um, it's about a DK worsted weight. I can knit it at a DK gauge I think. This is BFL Blueface Lister, no, yes, BFL um, in the goldenrod colorway that I got from Gritty Knits several years ago and yeah I got about 240 yards of it. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I haven't I haven't actually measured <laughs> I haven't actually measured the yardage since it dried but I did take the pre-dried measurement from my Nitty Naughty and I deducted about 8% to give myself a 240 yards um, of finished yarn and I should have skeined it on a two yard skein on my Nitty Naughty but I did not and so it's kind of a, a robust round kind of skein which is fine um but yeah I'm really really happy with it uh, my intent is to cast it on as soon as possible and I think I'm going to make a rain boom cowl out of it that is my pattern that no I think the sample for that is in the living room um, that is my pattern that I put out way, way earlier this year, I think in like February or March. And it's just a really nice cowl that I think this will work really well for. I don't know if I'll do the, the lace detailing on the main part of the cowl, but I will do, I think, the lace detailing on the edging of the cowl. And I think that will still look good. Um, I think that if I do the lace in the main part of it, it will kind of get lost but whereas the lace on the edging is a bit more defined. Anyway, I'm very, very happy with it. It's a really good first wheel spin experience. I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like I got better and more even after I, like as I was working on the second um, bobbin and um, I learned, you know, plying on a wheel, which was a first time experience for me. I kind of learned how that works and yeah it was just a really fun experience for me I really enjoyed it so um, yeah there's that and then I started and I talked about it last time I started my um, spooky spin it's a spin along that's hosted by is it on here no she doesn't have it on here um, it'll I want to say it'll be in the show notes, but also I don't know if I'll make show notes because I've been kind of slacking. I don't know where my phone went. Yeah. I'm going to quickly find her on Instagram so that I can tell you. And I, I tried to say her name last time, but it, I messed it up. Um, and so I don't want to do that again. <laughs> That's why I'm looking for it. Uh, on Instagram and her website and whatever she is called. My goodness, where are you? The 1764 Shepherdess. And she hosts the Spin 15 a Day kind of spinning challenge, spin along. It's, um, it's a continual spin along via Instagram. And every once in a while she'll do a special spin along that you can buy a kit for. And then it's you and the other people who are part of that. Um, it's, I, I don't know how many people it's limited to, 10 to 20 people. It's not a big group. Um, and then you get the fiber and you get some accessories. And I showed this all last time. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I showed it all last time. And then you get to spin it however you want. You can re-prep the fiber however you want. We received it as um, kind of in the form of uh, combed top, uh, like commercial 
commercially prepped comb top that I don't know if it was commercially dyed or if she dyed it or she had someone dye it for her um, but that was kind of the prep that it was and it was in separate segments there was a uh, and I believe this was a, uh, either 100 grams or 4 ounces but there was four separate equal sections of orange black purple and green and I took those sections and I um, I split them in, as such to do a fractal spin um, and I will probably talk more about how fractal spin works in a different video or just in a different podcast episode or maybe I'll do a vlog uh, episode on it since I've been trying to sort of do occasional vlogs this month for Vlogtober. I'm not doing every day but I did do a video the other day about designer confessions. <laughs> anyway this is the spooky spin and the colorway is called witch stockings which is stockings uh, and it is Coradale and this is my final yarn this is only about 90 grams this is what this weighed in at um, because my second bobbin um, ended up being a lot of leftover after I plied it and so I ended up just plying that back on itself which creates a similar effect because that bobbin was one that had um, the shorter repeats on it, so there was more repeats of the color um, or more changes of the color. It keeps wanting to focus on my face. Anyway, I feel like you get the idea. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, and so that's just a smaller like mini skein and it's still drying um, because I applied that the next day and so I let it set, the tw like the twist set on it and stuff a little bit longer. Anyway, it, the, the kit came with this little tag to put on it and I just kind of tied it on loosely with a bow so that uh, once I get that mini skein twisted up and, and figured out, um, I'll just store them together. I ended up with about a fingering sport-ish weight yarn um, of 250 yards and that is after drying so I measured this one accurately I did get about an 8 percent it was like a seven and a half percent yardage loss um, from the pre soaking and drying measurement to the post that <laughs> but I, I'm just I really love how it turned out it's really really beautiful my plan for it is um, actually maybe a little ambitious but I felt like I got a really good even spin um, it's pretty even and I really like it because of the the larger longer color repeats of the fractal are each of the four colors what I'm going to do is use this as the contrast color for, oh, I meant to print the pattern and bring it in here, <laughs> for the Icefall sweater by Tin Can Knits, which is a very beautiful sweater that is, um, uh, it's from their new Strange Brew collection and it's all over one, co one main color. And then the yoke has just a really simple kind of, they look kind of like maybe shards of ice, maybe that's where the name comes from but they look a little bit kind of like hearts and it uses four um four contrast colors one on top of the, uh, the other so you use contrast color one uh for however many rows of the of the color work and then you switch to the second color the third color and the fourth color and then i think it does have color work on like the cuffs in the bottom um but i thought it would be really fun to just use this as that whole section and just kind of um, let it kind of gradient. It's not a true gradient because again, it's kind of got this barber pole stripe, but there's kind of a main dominant color of, of each, the, the orange, purple, green, and black. And um, I thought it would be cool because it would sort of gradient down and it would, would create a similar effect as it would to have the four, I don't know why I'm doing this. You can't, this doesn't show you anything. <laughs> This is the direction of the yoke of the sweater, by the way. That's I'm demonstrating the yoke of the sweater <laughs> on my not hand knit T-shirt. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I feel like I feel like I'm saying that. Okay, you guys will see it when it, when I start knitting it. Um, I think I'll pair it with. Um, I'm, I'm having a hard time deciding if the. 
feel like this will knit in a really, I, I should just knit a swatch, but I'm not a swatcher. <laughs> That'll come back to bite me, but I'm not a swatcher. Uh, I'll knit a swatch of like the main color when I, before I cast on the sweater so that I know how like the overall fit of the sweater will be. Um, but I feel like it's going to knit up at a decent fingering weight gauge. And so um, I'm going to get a sweater quantity of um, Knit Picks, um, whatever their woolly wool is. It's their non-superwash fingering white wool in, in some sort of uh, light gray, maybe really light taupe colorway. I feel like a gray would look better. And that's what I'm going to pair it with. That's my plan for that. I'm really happy with it. Um, this um, Heather had commented um, on Instagram that she thought that maybe I had got my hands on some spin cycle. Um, girl, I wish. <laughs> but it, it does make me feel really proud of my work, and I feel like I'm I'm so thankful for all of the compliments because um, this is something that I've made with my hands that feels. Like this is kind of the same feeling I get when I dye a new colorway that is really like, wow, I can't believe I made that up. Or uh, when I dye a colorway that is one that I really love. It's it's just, I just, I'm really proud of myself and I really like how this has turned up. And if I didn't have a plan for it, this would be a sellable type of quality for somebody looking for a, a nice hand spun thing uh, like spin cycle and so um, I'm not selling it because first of all no <laughs> and second of all I have a plan for this and I'm really proud of it and I want to make something out of it and and so I'm hoping to do that uh, in the near nearer than far future uh, but this is one of my plans I think that I'll do for 2019 and it's kind of a carrot dangling in front of me um, because there are certain things that I want to start in 2019 but um, I, I do need to get a certain few things off of my off of my needles and out of my project bags and whips that I would like to get finished before then. Let me talk about my uh, my lazy Kate. Now a lazy Kate is something that um, spinners whether you are um, you can, they're more commonly used for wheel spinners, um, but you can make or acquire them for spindles as well. And, um, and you know, some people who use a spindle also might wind their, uh, their, their cops, their sections of, of spun singles onto like cardboard bobbins and, and might use a lazy kate as well. But a, a lazy kate is, is it, it's, go it's worth Googling. Um, I, the one that is on my wish list is from Acreworks and it's beautiful. So if, uh, once you finish this video, go up into the YouTube search bar and, and search for Acreworks, A-K-E-R works at Lazy Kate and you probably find some great demonstrations on how that is worked. There are other Lazy Kates that you can buy, but that's the one I've got my eyes on. Um, but I don't have one yet and uh, I don't want to buy a lesser expensive one um, because I don't want to have two eventually and, and so I'm, I'm going to save up to get the one that I want. Um, but in the meantime I have to have something to hold my bobbins while I'm plying the two singles or three or whatever together. Right now I only have three bobbins so I can only do two sig singles to ply together. Um, so I searched uh, DIY Lazy Kate on um, just Google, I guess. Um, it might have been Pinterest. I don't know. And I came up with something that someone had posted. Um, it might have even been like Susan B. Anderson. I don't even know. It was some famous knitter, spinner person, fiber person. And it's a paper bag plastic bags um, and long knitting needles. I think there was also a thing with a rubber band but I haven't been using that. Maybe I should but so essentially what you do Ooh, a little tutorial time here. Essentially what you do 
um, is you fold down the bag so it's kind of double, double thick. You take your long ass knitting needles, excuse my language for those of you who care, um, and you can use like metal ones, but and the ones she had shown were metal ones, but this is what I had on hand. And you essentially, you poke it through both layers, like that. You put your uh, your bobbin on in there, and then you poke it through the other side. So then your bobbin sits there. I should have brought one of my bobbins in here to show you. And you do that, and you can probably fit like three, maybe even four bobbins. But my goal is to have more than one, more than three spindles by the around the same time I have uh, a better lacy cake. And so I had no problem just making it for two. And then what the bags are for, the plastic bags, you shove them in the bottom, kind of fluffed up, and that provides enough drag that it tensions the bobbins from pulling off too quickly. Because um, you don't want your bobbins to, like if you if, while you're plying, you're essentially pulling yarn off the bobbin, and you may know this, but if you have a, a spool of any kind, I, I mean, you probably have a spool of thread, do this. <laughs> do, if, you, if you're not a spinner or anything like that and you want to know what I'm talking about, this will be fun for you. Um, get a spool of yarn, or get a spool of thread, because you probably have a spool of thread somewhere. I have a sewing machine back here, and there's literally not a spool of thread attached to it person who said you have a spool of thread because you probably do. Oh, and the one that I have in here is got plastic wrapped around it still. So. Anyway, <laughs> grab the end of it and then just like yank that and yank only was what you need and you will see <laughs> that the rest of that spool will just continue unfurling itself. <laughs> and while you're applying you don't want that to happen with your bobbin. Because if you do, then it will it will spool off way more than you need, and then your singles will get all twisted and it'll be a mess. So you need some sort of tension. On most lazy cakes, there's actual functionality for this, but on my little DIY cake, um, this provides enough drag against the bobbins that it tensions it. I think there's a thing with a rubber band that you're supposed to do too, but I think it was optional, and if it wasn't whatever it worked fine but this is a no, no joke this is what i used as a lazy cake for these two skeins of yarn that are now in a bag that's over here and i'm not gonna reach and grab them <laughs> so uh a, a acre works is on my on my wish list i want to get the maple finish acre works lazy cake because um it'll match my my shacked um sidekick. I feel like I'll have a, a similar finish and um, the reason I specifically want theirs is because it's completely flat pack. You can put all of the the spindle holder things um, kind of compacted down so essentially it's like the thickness of this notebook and just like maybe a little bit wider and a little bit longer. Um, but that's it's just a rectangle when once you've um, flattened it down and so that's one of the reasons that I want to get that it also has four holders for the bobbins I, I believe the holders are called spindles I could be wrong the, the, the sticks the dowels the things that hold the, <laughs> the bobbins it has four of them so if I ever am inclined to do a four ply yarn that is a typical four ply instead of like a cable ply or something like that um, then I'll have that extra, extra spot. Um, I probably would never be inclined to do more than a four ply. Uh, I, and honestly, I'm really liking the way the two ply looks. But that being said, I again, like I said before, I don't want to have to buy more than one Lazy Kate. And so I'd like that one. It's a little bit of an investment, but Acreworks makes great things. And so um, that's, that's my plan is to get that. And then when I get that, hopefully get couple bobbins and yeah bobbins aren't cheap but um also you know they're probably require enough kind of uh 
engineering to create so it's okay they're not cheap same with the the, the lazy cake so um i want to talk about my next spinning like what's up next for that um so <laughs> it's kind of a twofold what's next i'm going to actually give my wheel a little break um because i want to do something kind of fun with what my next wheel spin is but also I want to not neglect my spindle spins I have two active spins on my Turkish spindles and my plan is to spin um, spin every day on these spin about 15 minutes a day or so and get um, oh, this is still attached to a clump of fiber um, and get to uh, the end of the cop or the you know as much fits on the spindle before you take it off the spindle and you start a new one um i want to get to the end of the cop on both of these my current ones um so this one is probably about a quarter of the way full this is a bfl silk blend in a in the smitten colorway from sweet georgia yarns um and I bought this from Eat Sleep Knit. This is the blend that they carry. And um, my spindle is from um, Turtle Maid. And yeah, so this has been just kind of a really nice spin. It gave me uh, a lot of decent practice um, before getting my wheel. And um, the BFL, it kind of gave me an idea of how the BFL works with the staple of the BFL longer fiber lengths and the silk and kind of how that works with how slippy it is and um but yeah I don't want to ignore this and so I want to spin to um you know a, you know about out to here um on this I am not plying as I go I know that you can ply as you go with the Turkish spindle I just haven't been um I'm noticing some things that from spinning on my spindle I've learned about this is that I feel like um, I should have let this be higher twist, like more twist in the single, um, because it might be a little bit difficult to ply. But um, I, I, I have always been with my spindles one that kind of over twists anyway, so I feel like it'll probably be okay. Um, I've got a, quite a lot of this left though, and this is my first, uh, my first turtle or my first cop of of this and so at least I think it is I don't think I have a finished one in here um, but yeah I've got a lot of fiber left and so I want to get to the end of that cop and that if I'm spinning regularly on it which I haven't lately um, shouldn't take me all that long I mean if I put as much time into doing it on here as I was spinning on my wheel I could easily get to the end of the cop not the end of the fiber because spoon milling does take longer, but the end of that. Um, and then the second one that I have in progress, and this, by the way, is in my fat squirrel bag. This is the only one I have. I tend to miss her updates. I'm, I'm not very good at paying attention to updates for makers. Um, but it's just a really cute kind of mod. It's got bears and uh, roosters slash chickens, I guess. Uh, flowers, rabbits houses it's just really cute and I really like it and then um, in this bag which was a, a gift it was part of the um, um, my little pony cancha lot pattern kits from Wolfie Wool Yarns uh, and so this was a gift from Heidi because that was a collaboration we did and so she gifted me the bag um, and this one I'm, I'm using, this, uh, this one is my midi sized spindle from Turtle Maid, and this is the nano sized spindle, so it's much, much smaller. Um, and this one's about, uh, about a third of the way through this particular crop. Um, and I actually have several cops done of this, but it, again, it's a much smaller spindle, so let me pull out stuff from this bag. <laughs> Um, this is some hand-dyed Cheviot wool that I dyed, 
in this blue and yellow. This was the first time I tried dyeing fiber and I thought it was terrible and I, it, it's not felted or anything and I, I guess I tend to have a knack for being good at not felting things so thankful for that but um, I just thought it was kind of ugly. <laughs> But then I started spinning it and I'm, I'm kind of liking it a lot. So, whoop. so I had, uh, last time I showed this, I, and I, you know, it's been a while since I've shown my spindles to you guys. Uh, last time I showed this, I think that I was, I had already finished this one. And so those of you who are not familiar with Turkish spindles, um, the shaft of the spindle actually comes off like you can pull that off of there and then the smaller arm also pulls out of the larger arm and so you can pull apart the spindles um to have just your nice neat little ball of um of singles or of again like i said you can also um, kind of ply as you go chain ply as you go oh focus there But yeah, so last time I showed you, I think I had already finished this one and I was not very far into this one, but I have made some progress on it. Not recently, but not that long ago either. Um, and so I have two of those done and these are again, much smaller little balls of fiber. And so once I finish that cop also. Um, but as you saw, there's quite a lot of, of fiber here. <laughs> So, um, it'll be a little while before this one's done too. But, um, what I want to do is just give some good attention to both of these, uh, spindle spins before I go back to my wheel. And I actually also kind of want to mm, crowdsource, um, the, like, I want to pull you guys. That's the word. My goodness. I want to pull you guys on what you think I should spin next. So let me quickly grab a couple of things from my very small fiber stash and I'm going to let you guys pick what I'm going to spin next. So um, and that'll be on my wheel and that'll be one that I'll start after I do both uh, a cup on both of those which I expect will probably take me about a week to two maybe three weeks. So um Probably not before the next time I recorded the, ep the next episode, but shortly thereafter. Okay, so I'm not sure if I've shown any of these before. I'm, I know that one of them I showed you last time because I got it at the fiber festival that I went to last month at Fiber Fun in the Sip. Sorry, I'm just opening a plastic bag with this bat is stored in. Um, so there's three options that I'm giving you. Again, my fiber stash is not very large, and so um, this is like three out of the six things available. So what I'm going to do, this is also a giveaway poll. Um, in the comments below, <laughs> tell me which one you think I should spin next. Um, and then also tell me your, uh, your name on Ravelry so that I know how to contact you and get in touch with you. Um, actually, no, that's okay. I think I won't do it that way. You don't have to tell me that because when I announce who the winner is, I will just have you contact me. That, because I think that that just makes it easier. Um, so you'll you'll comment on the, in the YouTube comments below which one you think I should spin, and then it doesn't matter which one ends up winning. Um, so like the one that gets the most votes doesn't necessarily mean like if you chose the one that got the least votes, you're still in the in the in the running to to win the prize, and the prize for this is going to be um, uh, fiber. So <laughs> it's probably better if you are someone who either wants to receive fiber because you are a spinner, are learning to be a spinner, want to be a spinner. It's okay to have a little bit of fiber stash if you're not a spinner yet, if that's what you want. Um, that yellow yarn that I showed you that I had spun, that's been in my stash for years. <laughs> um, that fiber was. So, um, but the price is going to be approximately four ounces of Rolex. 
which are a type of fiber that is similar to a bat uh, that is kind of in, in little rolls and um, it's really a great thing for a, a really lofty finished yarn prep. So the, uh, the options are, the, uh, the first option is, uh, this is one is one that you saw last time. This is from Deep Dyed Yarns, and it doesn't have it on here because she forgot to label it, but um, it, this is Merino Silk, and I don't know the colorway name. I do not know um, the exact percentage of the fiber content. I'm sure I can contact her. She's a real, real sweet lady. Um, I just haven't yet, uh, but this is the Merino Silk. And so to vote for this one, you can say um, choice number one, you can say deep dyed yarns, you can say merino silk, whatever you want. Um, I'll know which one you're talking about because none of the other ones are merino silk. None of the other ones are deep dyed yarns. <laughs> um, number two is also a braid of combed top and this is from Yarns from the Plain. And this, um, is her Tits Out Collective colorway. Um, and this is 100% Cheviot. And yeah. So this is the number two option and I'll show these next to each other so you can kind of get an idea. I don't know how I'll spin them yet. Depending on how close to being ready to spin on the wheel I am next time. I might even have you guys help me vote for a, a prep, but probably not. So this is number two. You can vote for this by saying number two choice, by saying Yarns from the Plain, Tits Out Collective. Actually, please don't, probably don't say Tits Out <laughs> on the <laughs> YouTube one. I just don't want creepers coming to my channel. Um, or whatever, I guess I don't care. Uh, you could say Cheviot, because that's what this fiber is. So this is one, this is two. And then the third option is actually a bat. This is from Siobhan's Siobhan, Sh Siobhan, I'm sorry, <laughs> if you, Siobhan, happen to be watching, I apologize that I'm maybe butchering your name. It's a beautiful, beautiful name, and when Amy Florence of Stranded says it, it's really lovely, and she thinks she butchers names, but she says yours right. <laughs> I suck. Siobhan's Crass from the UK. This is a beautiful bat. It's got lots of sparkle. Um... The fiber content is lots of different things, um, but it's got lots and lots of sparkle. It's, yeah, now you can kind of see it. Lots of different blues and silvers. Um, this, I'm, I'm, I don't know, should I unfold it all the way? I feel like I've shown this on the podcast before and I've unfolded the whole thing. Anyway, it's massive. It's huge. Um, this is one of two bats that I bought from her. Um, recently and so um this is number three you can call this Siobhan's Crafts um by the way that's S-I-O-B-H-A-N I think um you can call this the bat because it's the only one that's in a bat form whereas the other two are um, combed top uh, you can call it the sparkly one whatever you want um vote for your preferred one for me to spin next and I will start spinning whichever that one ends up being on my wheel after I after I finish um, a little bit on those two spindles so uh, yeah <laughs> and um, the winner will be uh, drawn on next week's podcast so just comment below or ne next week two weeks from now the podcast the next podcast um let me pull my phone and my notebook and everything out of this box so there are a few things in here that are not part of my whip accountability thing um, because I just threw them in here on the way into this room so some of these are whips that I, I just needed to bring their project bags back in here because they are not whips that I intend to finish by the end of the year. And, and that is a key distinction in this process. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just hang some of those. 
off of here. They are whips that have just kind of been in various places around the house and I wanted to bring them in here and store them away properly, give them a nice home until I am ready to work on them again. And as you can see, there are several. Um, so let me finish pulling these. I had my phone over here for a reason. There is a list on my phone. I use the Keep app. Um, it's called Keep Notes. Right there, it's got the little yellow icon. Maybe it'll focus, maybe it won't. It's a little yellow icon that has a little light bulb and it's called Keep Notes. And I have a list of um, my priority things to finish. So let me quickly make sure that I know. Okay, this is not one that is on my priority list for the year. Um, I think that's, that's, okay, so this box used to live underneath in my winding station, there's a little shelf at the bottom. This is, this is a Finvard, by the way, F-I-N-N-V-A-R-D from Ikea, um, but it's got my whips that I want to put work on over, I have a little bit of mail goodies too. I guess I meant to talk about the mail stuff before, but I'll show that very last. There's only two things I got in the mail the last two weeks and only one of them is like a stash thing. So, um, so I'm keeping this out by my desk now so that I can store current things I'm working on in it. So like, um, where the heck I put the stuff that I was working on today? It's under this pile of stuff over here. <laughs> I can store it in it when I'm not actively working on it. Like, okay, like this, you know, just in there right next to my desk and I can pull it out when I'm ready to work on it. And also it has some things in here that are kind of whips that I haven't been actively working on but I want to work on over the year. Also please excuse, my hair is supposed to be kind of this blue that's down here and it fades out really a lot. So I realize it looks uneven. It's not a bad dye job, it's just colorful colors fade out and sometimes they fade out unevenly. So in this box I want to quickly show what I've got in here. I've got the Magnolia socks that I showed you guys last time. Um, I'm not going to get into real details about these because they're not whips that I've worked on over the last week. I've got, those are um, less than half done, but the cuff is done, or the full leg is done on the one sock, and then about half of the leg is done on the second one. So they've got, you know, good progress made on them. Um, another one that's in here. This is actually not a cast on project. This is yarn for a sock project that I would like to start for myself before the end of the year. I have got a hat project that I haven't worked on in over a year. That is not a joke. This, um, you guys might remember this. There's not that much left to it. In fact, I probably could finish this in one to two days if I sat down and worked on it. And the pattern is still in here and I guess I thought that it wasn't so I'm glad it is still in here. That means that all my little markings and things are on there and I should be able to find where I'm at pretty easily. Um, so that, I wanna finish that hat because it's been on the needles for over a year and I would like to just have it done. And then I have my little cozy memory squares things. My goal for this is to knit these last two squares that are on this corner to make it a full rectangle, weave in the ends, and then either finish it as a doll blanket for one of my kids to use for their stuffies or dolls, or, um, you know, continue to work on it. This Cozy Memories blanket is very small squares. Like, you can see that these are really tiny squares. This is not like most people make their Cozy Memories blankets. Um, these miter squares are tiny. 
Um, but yeah, I feel like I, I want to I wanna weave in the ends. It's pretty unruly back here. I want to weave in the ends and get these two squares up here to kind of finish off this corner. And then I'll decide what I want to do with it. Maybe I'll continue and make it larger, make it be more of a baby blanket size. Um, I don't know. My current plans really are to just um, kind of put a nice edging on it and maybe back it with like some fabric or something and make it just a dolly blanket. But I want to get those two squares done and the ends woven in on that. And then um, the only other thing that's cast on in here is a shawl design that I have been working on. I actually, it's, I have my friend Erin who is already also knitting it along with me so that it will be um, edited and, and tested before too long and I can just have it done. And um, I just need to sit down and work on that. It's not even hard, it's just, I get distracted by all the new patterns that come out and things like that. And then there's one more set of stuff that I want to cast on and um, I actually shared this over on my Bayou City Yarn Co. account on Instagram. Um, I would like to knit socks for my kids for Christmas um, to put in their Christmas stockings which are also actually a project that I, I, I decided to knit color work stockings for our entire family because our previous stockings were dollar store stockings that uh, had kind of just you can't use those for more than like two three years of holidays before they kind of don't really work <laughs> they don't hold up much um so we threw them away at the end of the last year and i, I bought the yarn and I, I have a pattern i'm going to be making color work stockings for us and i would like to also make socks for each of my kids so um, and there's more details on the post, on the Bayou City Yarn Co. post. It's got this pattern in the first photo, but it's um, like three photos in that post. Um, I'm going to be making the Moto socks. These are all by um, Mara Catherine, Catherine Briner, which is Orange Knits. She also wrote How I Roll, Rose City Rollers, and the Jelly Roll sock patterns. Anyway, so Moto, which you, can, you can't really see on the printed version of this anyway. You can't really see what the sock looks like, but um, that kind of gives you a good idea of how that pattern looks. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be making that out of this color. Um, I bought these a while back actually because they're all DK weight and I knew I would like them. The after school socks I'm going to make for my older daughter. Out of this sparkling pink GK yarn. This is the Pinkie Pie colorway from um, Wolfie Wool Yarn. And then the playing favorites, kind of the core pattern of this for my youngest. I'm not sure if I'll do the lace or not. We haven't decided if we think that'll bother her or if she'll really find that amusing. She does not have any like issues with texture or um, things like that, um, but she is three and so the holes might weird her out. Um, but I think it might be okay. And we're gonna make, I'm gonna make that with this one here, which is the Applejack colorway from the My Little Pony series by Wolfie Wool Yarn. Uh, this skein is not for anybody, <laughs> it's just, uh, I had these three originally stored together since they're the same, part of the same collection. Anyway, but those, these are more of a, it's December, I've finished the holiday stockings, I've made great progress on everything else before I even begin to think about casting those on. But this is my box of stuff for the rest of the year. This is, this is what I'm, um, it does not have the Christmas stocking stuff in it, but this is my whips for the rest of the year. These and the ones you saw earlier. I don't really have any solid plans to cast on anything else, um, other than what I've just mentioned. So this is my accountability box. This is my, um, do these and nothing else. Um, so that includes, you know, the whips that I'm currently working on, the hats for the three hats cow. What else did I show you guys? I had another whip and I don't know where the heck it went. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's really funny actually. It's, I have, um, 
this bag over here that's kind of been collect. I like to use it to collect my stuff while I podcast. Um, yeah, there it is. I want to grab it out of there now, though, so that it's in there. And, um, excuse me while I reach down. But that is my... Um, that is my accountability box for the rest of the year. And so my goal is, um, I know that you guys saw me pull out all those other bags, these project bags. There's a lot of them. In fact, up here, I even have a bag full of yarn that's specifically for another project. And I talked about that in my, my vlog video. And I have other plastic bags that are full of yarn for another project that I talked about. I talked about two specific projects in my vlog that are kind of things that are not right now projects. Um, and so I have a lot of things both on the needles and kind of in the, the back of my mind as future, near future projects. And my plan is to you know, work on the things that I have planned. Um, you know, there's very few cast-ons that I have planned that I intend to actually do right, right now. Those, those stockings are one. I would like to finish out the three hats knit along, um, that uh, classic cable knit hat that is the third pattern. I already, I already know who I want to gift that hat to. And, um, this one probably I'll keep. <laughs> um, but, I want to I want to be able to finish these things and it's not actually that much um, you know I've shown you essentially all of it it's not that that much the thing is I get so and I don't know if you guys feel this way too but even though there are some of us who are okay with having lots of things on the needles at one time there is a point for I think all of us that we start to feel ashamed of the number of whips we have or if not ashamed, we might start to feel kind of, um, I don't want to say claustrophobic, but there's a feeling that you get when you feel trapped and not, not at all like claustrophobia, um, but, you know, kind of relate a, a similar feeling to how one might feel if you have too many obligations and so with all of these things that we feel are obligations because we're, we're obligating them to ourselves or we're obligating them to other people and um, so we start to feel overwhelmed that's the word I mean um, we feel really overwhelmed and so I I've been feeling that way about my whips lately and so when you get overwhelmed about your projects you get to a point where you kind of don't want to work on any of them. And so that's where things like cast on ideas comes from, where you're bored of the current projects. But you have to take that to another level when you already have enough whips to work on. And um, there is this, you know, you could just frog it. If you're not happy with your work, why, and you're not working on it, just frog it. But for me, I think all of these projects I want to finish still. I'm not afraid of frogging things. Um, so when it comes to a point where I'm, I, I'm I've contented myself with the fact that I won't finish something, I will pull it out. And I have done that. In fact, I did that quite recently with the Rivula shawl that you guys may have seen me working on um, through up until this probably June, um, maybe July. And I, I finally pulled that out because while I really loved the pattern and I really would have loved the finished object, I was to a point with it where I knew that I was not going to finish it. And so all of these, I still feel like I'm at a place with them where I want to finish them. And some of them are actually designs, like probably half of these ones that I put over here, um, kind of back burner stuff, they're designs. <laughs> so, um, I don't want to overwhelm myself. I keep rubbing up against my mannequin here. I need a name for her. <laughs> Maybe we'll do another giveaway for naming her, but not this time. Um, save your ideas. Um, 
so I want to feel happy and content with my, my projects again. So what I have decided essentially is to pull out the projects that I am most excited about finishing sooner, pull out the projects that I feel have a legitimate deadline to them that might even be self-imposed, but I had a better reason for imposing that deadline on myself than some of the other ones. And um, pull them out and make a manageable goal. So I don't, I mean, let's face it, my goal is to finish all of this in the next two months. But let me just be real with myself, because if I make my goal too big, it's not manageable, it's not really reachable and that is not the point of setting goals. Setting goals is to set manageable goals. So this box here, these are my manageable goals and I don't want to be actively working on more than probably three at a time. So I have the three that I showed you and now next week I'm hoping this is an FO and then I'll just pull another thing out of here that will make it into my circulation or I'll cast on the, ca uh, the cable knit, basic cable knit, whatever the heck the name of that pattern is. I might cast on that because that's one that I've kind of included as my, my box of stuff. That hat and those Christmas stockings. I point to here because the yarn is in the cabinet. Um, but either way, my, my point is this is my accountability box. I know what I have planned because 2019 I want to start with a really kind of fresh look. I have things I want to cast on. I have designs that I want to finalize. I have designs I want to finish. I have designs I want to cast on. You guys have... <laughs> I have designs that I have not cast on. They are just the existing sketchbook and they are beautiful and you guys will love them but they don't exist really yet and I, I feel grateful for the fact that I have the ability to um, visualize and create something and maybe even write out almost the entire pattern without actually ever putting yarn on needles but I also still enjoy the process as a designer of putting the yarn on the needles and knitting the sample and kind of tweaking it as I go and, and pulling out if something isn't working and you know I don't know if you know <laughs> but that's how it is for me and so this is my accountability box this is my box it's a beautiful box that I got specifically to be under my winding station so that I could store my whips bags in but I decided that I needed to bring it out to where I knit the most, and that's by my computer desk right now. And um, yeah, when I finish this, I'll, I'll, I'll cast on the other hat. When I finish this sock, um, I'll you know I'll pull out a different sock, or I'll pull out that shawl, or whatever. When I finish this, which has a pretty solid deadline, I'll have about another month and a half before the end of the year where I can you know work on other things. So. You know, that's my accountability box, and that's, I want to kind of encourage, this isn't going to be a make-along or anything, I want to encourage other people to find a way to manage their whips, be real about what you have, don't stress out about frogging something, don't even think about, okay, I'm going to finish these, or I'm going to frog these, and don't like separate your whips like that, don't, because that's, that adds more stress to the situation because then you have to suddenly decide which projects you don't want to work on anymore. I mean, obviously you might have something that you already know you're going to frog, but I don't want you to go through a session of finish or frog and sort your whips like that. What I want to suggest is kind of maybe line up your whips or if you keep, um, if you keep detailed project pages on everything on Ravelry, which I really like to do, kind of look at all of the things that you have. You can sort your project page and you can select to show only in progress things or only hibernating things. And kind of write down, get pen to paper or or use a list uh, like the Keep, uh, the Keep Notes or Keep List, whatever the heck that app is called. Um, I'll try and link it down below the name of that app so you guys can see that. I don't know if it's on iPhone, but I do know it's on Android because that's what I use. Um, and and kind of just make a list of, of uh, put them kind of in order. If you want to pull out all your whip bags and throw them on your bed and kind of 
you know, which ones do you want to get done first? Put like three there. You don't need to prioritize one project over another. You know, just prioritize prioritize three projects and then, and then the next couple of projects and then the next couple of projects and then think about okay how much knitting time do I realistically have am I going to lose knitting time as we move into the the December hustle and bustle holiday season or am I going to gain knitting time because um, I'm you know maybe you are somebody who has time off during uh, holiday breaks from from school um do you have children are those holiday breaks going to actually make you lose knitting time <laughs> um just think of what realistically you can get done over the next two and a half ish months and allow yourself to be realistic about that and then throw all those whips in a basket or a box you could you don't have to have oops, threw my phone on the floor. You don't have to have a pretty box like this. You can, you know, if you've recently received something in the mail in like a medium or, or large priority flat rate box, fold the flaps in on that and use that. I say this from experience because that's how my life works. Um, you know, if you have an Amazon box that you recently received something from Amazon, if you have a shoe box, a, you know, a basket or even like a bag like this would work. Although these grocery shopping bags kind of tend to be it's easy to kind of lose stuff in them because they're deep and they're nooks and crannies. But um, essentially, you're going to want to find a place to put all of those whips that you think you can get done before 2019. And then, um, you know, make sure that the ones that are the highest, highest priority, throw those on your desk, keep them to the side on your bed or whatever um, as you're putting your other ones in. And then put those main priority, number one, have to finish these ones soonest on top. If you have something that's not quite cast, if you have something that's not cast on yet, but you know it's going to be part of, of something you want to get done because of holiday knitting or whatever, throw that in, print the patterns, put those in there, even maybe throw them in their project bags. You know, if you've got an empty project bag already and you want to put them in there with the needles and stuff, put them in there. Um, have a good idea of what you plan to get done. Now, your goal might not be to finish all the projects in your bin, in your box. Your goal might be to, um, you know, if you've got a, a scarf that's only like four rows in or four inches in and you, you're, you're thinking, okay, I don't need to have this done by the end of the year, but I really wanna have this super close to it. Get it to the halfway point, get it to the three fourths point. Um, if you have, you know, a, a blanket project, like one of those long-term ongoing blanket projects like the Granny Stripe, the, uh, the Bits and Bobs, the, um, the, the Cozy Memories, if you have a goal for one of those, but you, you know you're not going to get it done, but you're like, okay, I want to put 20 squares in this blanket, I want to put 20 stripes in this blanket, 20 grams in this blanket, whatever have a have an idea of what you want to get done and it doesn't have to be a finish it it just has to be like a, a how much progress you want to make for the most part everything in my box i want to finish but you know that doesn't mean you have to i could grab another one of these bags that's that's a bigger project and throw it in here with the goal of having it just get a certain far a, a certain amount done but you know i feel like that makes sense and so the idea is to to get as to get your goals kind of organized and figure out what you want and make it manageable so that you're not stressed out. And then everything else, all of these other things, organize them in a, in a generally basic way. Um, I have uh, I have another one of these, threw a sock blocker on the floor. I have another one of these sitting over here that I'm probably going to put them all in and just set them over here under my winding station so that they are still where I can see them, but they're not, they're, at this point I've already given myself permission to not worry about them. And so I can, you know, if I see them because I need to wind up something, um, I'm not worried about it. I'm not, I'm not in a rush to cast it on or I'm not in a rush to pick up a whip. I'm not in a rush to do anything like that because I know that's not a priority right now. Uh, Give yourself permission to cheat. Give yourself permission to go, okay, I've done, I've turned the heel on this sock. 
I'm not finding myself picking it up. It's not giving me life. It's not giving me enjoyment. And, you know, be honest with yourself. Will it truly be okay with you if you set it aside till next year? Or, you know, do you really, really, really want to get it done? And kind of allow yourself to let something go into your longer languishing whips basket and and you know move on to the next thing maybe just tuck it into the bottom under other things you know pull out or, or shift things aside and put it at the bottom you know decide to work on that at the end of the year once you've done the other things so you know give yourself permission to do that give yourself permission to you know okay I'm gonna I'm gonna switch these you know like um, do what makes you happy don't you know try not to cast on things that you weren't planning to cast on this is where a little bit of self-control comes in i know that it's fun to just kind of talk about how you don't have self-control with your yarn but practicing a little tiny bit of self-control especially when you have as many whips as you do like i do it will make you feel happier about what you're working on so try not to cast on things that you weren't planning to. If you get a little bit of cast on I just look in your box. You probably have something in there that you set you through in the yarn in the pattern for. Cast that on. Even though you desperately want to cast on that new Caitlin Hunter pattern, <sighs> cast on your socks that you put yarn in your box for. Um that's probably gonna be me. <laughs> So that's kind of just my my goal and I guess now it's turned into me telling you how to do this along with me and how to kind of free up your your knitting uh, anxieties and stuff through the rest of the year. In 2019 we've got lots of things planned. Um, I, I, I want to work on some of these. I'm going to give myself permission to cast on certain things. Um, because, you know, the start of 2019 is the start of new things and the start of, you know, it's, it's your little reset button on life. And at, at, at a time where especially, I mean, I don't want to say especially in the United States, but it really worldwide, we're at a time where we feel like we don't have a lot of control over things. And we, we more and more find ourselves wishing we had a little reset button <laughs> for certain circumstances. And so this is your knitter's reset button is the beginning of the year and allowing yourself to, um, you know, let things carry over into the next year that you're not desperately worried to finish and finish things that you really genuinely think that you can and want to finish. The last thing before I go, you guys, I have a couple things that I got in the mail today that I really want to show you. Um, the first of them, and I'm pretty sure this is still available, and I want to encourage you to go buy some. This is not my yarn. Um, Lolo Did It is um, a yarn brand out of, um, I believe, Nevada. And that's going to blow out and not show it to you. Huh? And Lauren um, has been doing this special Hurricanes colorway every year. And by Hurricanes, I don't mean the hockey team. I mean um, when our country continues to be hit by massive, massive storms that are devastating. Uh, last year with Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma and Hurricane, oh my goodness, Maria, is that the one that hit Puerto Rico? I just call it the Puerto Rico hurricane uh, because that one was really messed up. Um, she developed a beautiful colorway which is not directly available because it's in this bag that I plan to make something with. Um, and then this year, again, she created this and what happens is she donates the proceeds of the sales of this colorway to help with hurricane uh, relief. And it's the Helping Hippos colorway. This is, says Helping Hippos 2018. She might have changed it a little bit from last year, but it's essentially the same colorway. It's got lots of pretty rainbowy colors on this beautiful gray base. And I got this on the plush sock base, which is 75% superwash merino wool, 15% uh, nylon, and 10% tencel. It's 115 grams, 430 yards of fingering weight four ply. So I'm quite excited to make something out of this next year. Um, this is uh, just, it's a really special colorway to me because last year when Hurricane Harvey came through, there's a video way, way back. If you've watched all my episodes, you'll know, you'll have seen it, um, where I show the, the little care package she actually sent me um, 
with a, a skein of her yarn and uh, I just thought I was getting a skein of her yarn and like the tape measure that she had produced. <laughs> but she would sent me a skein of her yarn and a project bag and some little notions and uh, like a, a hand balm and just a beautiful little care package. And so I knew this year that I wanted to buy another skein um, and a different base and just, you know, have something um, and to contribute this year. And the other thing I received in the mail today, uh, my sample knitter, Heather, I actually have two sample knitters named Heather. <laughs> my sample knitter, Heather, who knit me the um, Gills socks, she finished them and I received them today. And here they are. Ooh, that blows out the camera. I love this colorway. This is the Mermaid Lagoon colorway. And my camera is flashing at me telling me, hey, you have to change my battery. Um, but this is the Gills socks. Oh gosh, I love this pattern. I love it so much on this yarn too. Um, on the Mermaid Lagoon colorway. And the colorway is not gonna show accurately at all. This is impossible to photograph, by the way. Um, but she finished those, she sent me those, and then she sent me a little gift. Uh, these are pin back buttons. That are from Susan's Sweet Squeeze, totally adorbs art. They're uh, from, uh, it's Etsy, uh, on her Etsy is Susan O. Linick. Susan O. L. E. I. N. I. K. Maybe that'll show. I'm having a really hard time holding it still though. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but there's these little pin back buttons and this one says it turned out just like the Pinterest pin. It's like a success badge. <laughs> I like I did it sort of thing. <laughs> and then this one says finally used thing I bought five years ago. <laughs> Which really speaks to me as a yarn enthusiast, somebody who stashes some yarn away. Uh, my stash has gotten to a bit of an uncontrollable for me, for me level. Which is kind of why I'm, you know, want to focus really dedicatedly on my whips. And I'll talk next time a little bit about my stash and how I'm managing my stash uh, into the next year and I'll talk again about um, my plans for starting 2018 fresh besides this stuff. This might be a multi-part kind of series on that because it just it's too much to talk about in one episode. But um, anyway, that is all there is for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in for this kind of long episode. I appreciate you watching and I, as always, um, I love to see your comments and hear from you, so um, come chat with me. Um, but that is it. I hope everybody has a great next couple of weeks. Happy crafting. Bye.